whenever a hockey legend passes away, uh, somebody who had been idolized by generations of, of young kids and Canadians, um, it's, a, it's a sad day, a sad day for hockey and for Canada and Canadians. And certainly the passing of Bobby Hull, uh, the news of which we, we just received earlier today, uh, is such uh, an occasion. More so even for people that knew him when he played and, and practiced and lived in Cambridge. Um, back then, in, in the fall of 1953, Bobby Hull was a 14-year-old kid from St. Anne, Ontario, down near Belleville on the Bay of Quinte. He had been scouted by Bob Wilson, the, the esteemed uh, hockey scout for the Chicago Blackhawks. He'd been scouted as early as when he was 12 years old. So people recognized that he was a, a great up-and-coming young hockey player. Uh, he was signed to the Black Hawk organization as a, as a kid, as a 14-year-old, and he was brought to Preston, Hespler. Galt had a, a, the, the top junior aid affiliate for the Black Hawks back then. They played out of Galt Arena, and Bobby Hull uh, would come to town. He didn't play many games with the Galt Junior A Blackhawks, but he did play a half dozen or so. Most of his games, though, were played at the old Preston or at the old Hespler uh, Arena, which is now gone. And uh, he stayed at a, uh, they say he was billeted at a boarding house in Preston. Well, the boarding house was really uh, the Sulphur Springs Hotel. That was owned by a man named Wiseman, who also happened to own the Junior B Hespler Hawks. And, and so maybe it made sense uh, from an economic standpoint to put him up at the hotel. But in retrospect, for a 14-year-old kid uh, to, to be billeted at a hotel, a hotel that even in that day and age was regarded a, a bit as a, as a bit of a dive, was not, a, it was not an appropriate place to, to put a 14-year-old kid. And one wonders that stay at the he he Sulphur Springs Hotel as a 14-year-old had anything to do in, in shaping his formative uh, years uh, and his, his later life. In any case, it's all speculation. But Bobby Hull's tenure in, in Cambridge is interesting on a number of fronts. One being that he had close ties with each of the component communities that now comprise Cambridge. He went to Preston High School, played football at Preston High School, uh, was on the track and field team. He's really a, a, an outstanding, young, strong uh, athlete at the time. He played uh, most of his games and most of his practices at the, the Hespler Auditorium. And he had a connection with Galt Arena in that um, he did play several games there. But the bulk of his time was spent in Preston and at, at, in Hespler. The fact that he did attend for a short time Galt Collegiate Institute. And he lived, when he was going to Galt Collegiate, he lived uh, on the next street over from Galt Collegiate on Haddington Street. Collegiate. We don't know exactly how long he was at Galt Collegiate, uh, other than it was a relatively short period of time. Um, he did pull, uh, uh, during a track and field meet at Galt Collegiate, he pulled a hamstring, a severe pull uh, that he didn't tell his coaches about because he was afraid that the, 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 they'd be very upset. Uh, he, he wasn't really supposed to be um, skylarking in other other sports while he was with the, the Junior A and, and the Blackhawk organization. So as a result of that, that injury, he played poorly. They sent him down to Woodstock, to the Junior B Woodstock team. And uh, it was when he went to Woodstock that they ended up winning the All-Ontario Junior B title. Uh, so it wasn't a bad thing for him to go to Woodstock, as it turns out. Subsequently, he was off to play with the Junior A team uh, in St. Catharines, uh, which replaced the Galt Junior A Blackhawks at that point. But, but his connection, I mean, attending school at GCI, but mostly at Preston High School, living in Preston, living in Galt, playing uh, at the Hespler Auditorium. He touched all three areas of the, uh, of the community. And that's something that a couple other legends who had ties uh, in Galt never did. Bob, uh, Bobby Hall was, was alone in that regard with 
his his connection to all three Galt, Preston, and Hessler. Gordy Howe, when he played uh, in 1944-45 for the Galt Junior A Red Wings, so just a few years before Bobby Hall, um, Gordy Howe stayed. He was billeted in Galt and he played at Galt and he worked at, at Galt. He attended a few classes at Galt Collegiate. He, he subsequently thought he didn't attend any classes. We've heard from a number of students who recall him at least being in a few classes at the very beginning of the, of the school year. Terry Sawchuk, one of the other greats that had a connection to Cambridge, uh, played with the Galt Junior A Blackhawks after Gordy Howe was here. So they didn't play together. But one of the guys that did play with both of those people was uh, an NHLer, a future NHLer named Marty Pavlich. As I am talking now, Marty Pavlich is 95 years old, uh, living in Big Sky, Montana, and uh, has been a wealth, uh, really a source of a wealth of information. And I think that's such a contrast with with Bobby Hull, who was billeted for most of his time at the at the hotel. Um, guys like Marty Pavlich, Gordy Howe, uh, Terry Sawchuk, they were all billeted. And and later, and uh, Pete Conacher, who who played uh, with the Galt the Blackhawks for three seasons, um, they were they were all billeted with loving and caring families. It made them feel like they were at home and that people cared about them. Bobby Hull didn't really have that when he was in town. The other thing I, I should add when I'm t we're talking about Bobby Hull is uh, Bobby Hull never really had another, there was another factor in this uh, for kids far from home and living on their own for the first time. There was a, a, a the trainer for the Galt Junior Red Wings and later the Galt Junior A Blackhawks was a man named Toots Last. And Toots Last and his wife Mabel uh, lived just down the, the the street on Shade Street from Galt Arena. They were surrogate parents. They 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 took in these kids who had billets, uh, but the, the kids would spend a lot of time at the Last house, and uh, they they'd go there sometimes for dinners. They they were always welcome. They didn't have to knock. Um, and Toots and his wife Mabel looked after them like they were their own kids and. Uh, Gordy Howe never forgot that. Um, in fact, that was one of the first people uh, he brought up when at our first meeting, uh, when he learned I was from Cambridge. Um, he talked about Toots Last and uh, what an impact he had had on his life for the year that he spent here. For Marty Pavlich, who was here three years, that was that that impact was uh, multiplied many times. And unfortunately, Bobby Hall never had that. If he had, who knows what a, um, kind of a legacy that might have had on his his later life. There's a great story uh, about uh, Bobby Hall, a, a few great stories, but one of the stories uh, involves uh, um, when Bill Bartels picked Bobby Hall up at the Sulphur Springs Hotel, took him to the practice at Galt Arena, and on the way home, uh, the car in front of him was going a little too slow over the bridge uh, across the Speed River in Preston. And uh, so young Bill Bartels, who was only 15 at the time and driving his mother's 1953 Dodge convertible, a beautiful car that she was so proud of. And there was Bill driving it at 15 years old, not old enough to have his license, and when he made that pass uh, on the bridge in Preston, that ill-advised pass, uh, Len Sneath, the police constable from Preston, was waiting for him. Uh, Len uh, Sneaky Sneath, they called him. He was fame, famed as Sneaky Sneath. He pulled him over and he asked Bill to get out of the car and come back to the squad car. Well, of course, Bill was having a heart attack, uh, 15 years old, driving his mother's convertible. Um, he'd done something wrong and uh, he was going to pay the penalty now and he was just uh, in mortal fear of Sneaky Sneath. Sneaky Sneath said to him, said, tell me, is that young fellow that's in the front seat of your car, is that that young Robert Hull we've been hearing so much about? And Bill says, yes. And he says, well, it's good. I want to meet him. And there was no ticket. He met Bobby Hall, young Bobby Hall, and uh, the you know the infraction was quickly forgotten. 
It's a famous story though that uh, both would tell in subsequent years. Uh, years later, Bobby Hull phones Bill Bartels up. They kept in touch over the years. And uh, Bobby Hull was attending a, uh, a cattle auction just south of, of Galt uh, on the uh, Gil Henderson uh, farm. And, and there were some, some of the top cattle men and, and people from that industry from all over the world who were attending this auction. Uh, they were from Montana, from uh, elsewhere in the States, from England, from New Zealand, Australia. And uh, Bobby said, listen, I'm coming to this auction. Would you care to go with me? And it'll give us a chance to catch up and uh, it'll be fun. So they they go to the auction and uh, there was this this young uh, um, steer that uh, 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 Bobby Hull was so high on and advised Bill to buy it as an investment. He said it will pay pay dividends if you buy this 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 uh, young bull and and so he did and he thought what on earth am I doing after he bought this because he he wasn't a farmer he wasn't a cattleman he had no place to house this animal uh, he had to, he had to find somebody to look after it apparently it did make him some money and it, it wasn't a bad investment altogether after all he would stay after practice that year at Hessler he'd stay uh, sometimes for hours with young Bill Bartels. Bill was a goalie. Bobby Hall was taking these slap shots. That's how he, he was honing his slap shot, the slap shot that became famed throughout the hockey world as, as the hardest one uh, that anybody possessed. And, and there was a young Bobby Hall honing his craft, practicing, taking shot after shot uh, at, at Bill Bartels. Yeah, and poor Bill was on the receiving end of, of all these shots. But uh, in any case, that was one of his, uh, one of the things that he developed and he worked on when he was here in, in Cambridge. Bobby Hull wrote uh, uh, several books uh, about his career, his hockey career. And he always made mention of the fact that his father and mother would make the trek from Point Anne, Ontario and Eastern Ontario uh, to Hespler, no matter where he was playing, they'd come to Hespler on a regular basis. It's a long trip from there, or to Woodstock, and then later uh, to St. Catharines. In fact, he said in the span of just a couple of years, when he was playing with those teams, um, they his parents went through three cars because of all the trips and the, the extensive driving they had to do. But they were supportive. They had a large family. Um, but they were supportive of their son and, uh, and, uh, whether they liked him staying at the hotel or not, I, I think I heard and might've read that, uh, they weren't too keen on that, but Bobby Hull was embarking on an adventure as, as all the young hockey players are. It was an adventure. The adventure of his life, uh, had begun. He'd left home, but the world awaited the NHL. Uh, he had dreams and hopes, uh, and he would do everything he could to try to make it there. But this was the beginning of his journey, and uh, he was going to do everything he could uh, to make a go of it. And he never would return home to live permanently, uh, as was the case with, with many of these hockey players. Um, Gordy Howe, we know, after his year in Galt, uh, went on to Omaha and then was quickly up with the Detroit Red Wings. Um, when we look at these legendary hockey players, um, Gordie Howe was billeted with another Westerner uh, by the name of Terry Cavanaugh, who played uh, on the Junior A um, Red Wings with him. And uh, they were billeted at the Sullivans. Mrs. Sullivan, uh, who lived on Charles Street, had lost her husband not long before. And she took in these young hockey players as a way to augment her income and help make ends meet. And that was on um, uh, Charles Street, which is just off of Blenheim Road in, in West Galt, not far from Mount View Cemetery, in fact. Terry Sawchuk lived right on Grand Avenue, not far from where the School of Architecture is now and across the road from Knox, uh, what was Knox uh, Galt Presbyterian Church. She li he lived with a, at a, a, a lady who took in billets, and her name was Masterson. 
and uh, Pete Conacher lived on McNaughton Street with the Weavers. Uh, Marty Pavlich lived at the corner of uh, Dundas and uh, Grantham Avenue uh, with the Arbuckles. The, the people that I've been able to speak with, Marty Pavlich and um, with uh, Pete Conacher, they couldn't have been happier. Uh, they were away from home. The homesickness, of, of course, uh, set in, but their billets helped uh, alleviate that to a great degree as did Toots and Mabel Last. Uh, again, something that Bobby Hull never got acquainted with. Uh, if he had played most of his games with the Galt Junior A Blackhawks, he would have been well acquainted with, with Toots and Mabel Last. As it was, he, only, he had only a passing familiarity with them because most of his time was in Preston and playing in Hesplerth. How should we look at, at the life of Bobby Hull and, and his connection locally and in the in a broader perspective, in the annals of of the sport that, that uh, Canada has taken as its own, and um, I think you know Bobby Hall was a complex man, uh, but a, a legend nevertheless in in hockey circles, and and rightly so. He was well liked and loved by uh, a lot of people, and. Uh, what he did on the ice is, uh, uh, in many respects, unparalleled. He was uh, hero worshipped by uh, generations of young kids. Our, sometimes our sports heroes, the people who are, we revere so so greatly, are not the people that we think they might be in in real life. You know, you look at somebody like Jean Beliveau, who uh, put out a book later in his life, and and Bobby Hull, who had uh, a book uh, published later in his life as well. And they were both on, on book tours. The local bookstore in, in Cambridge, uh, the owner shared with me, um, the, there was a, quite a contrast between people like Jean Beliveau and, and Bobby Hull. Uh, he said the, the uh, Jean Beliveau couldn't have been uh, more gentlemanly and couldn't have been nicer to them. Uh, Bobby Hall was was there to sign books and and in and out and uh, didn't come across as being all that pleasant an individual with them. There can be many reasons for that. It might have been a bad day. Uh, but certainly, he had legions of friends and people that knew him and got along well with him, and uh, um, so he he was certainly personable. <laughs> that Bobby Hull had passed away and it really was the end of an era, an era that saw people like uh, Gordie Howe and Terry Sodchuk and, and those types of players who are gone now forever and, uh, and they won't come this way again. Uh, the fact that Cambridge had a, a hand in, in their formative years uh, I think is something to be celebrated uh, and certainly to be talked about and, uh, and made known. And... Uh, that at Galt Collegiate, um, you know, that's where most of the students that were here in town to play hockey uh, attended school. That's where... Um, guys like people that were still wanting to pursue their education so people like Pete Conacher who was a gifted not only a hockey player but but a, a student he came from Toronto and spent three years uh, playing with the Galt uh, Junior A Blackhawks and attended Galt Collegiate so of the three giants the three hockey giants that came to town Hull, Howe and Sawchuck Sawchuck attended class at Galt Collegiate, and I think it was grade 11. Hull attended class at Galt Collegiate, although it was a, a short tenure there because most of his time was at Preston High School, but he did attend school at Galt Collegiate. And Gordy Howe, who attended just a few classes before he gave up his education, something that he regretted the rest of his life, and in fact uh, used it as a a learning experience that he gladly shared with young 
hockey players and young people everywhere about the importance of of getting your education. Interestingly, there was a, a teacher at Galt Collegiate who in, in later years would tell the story and he'd say it to his his new uh, students every September. He'd, he'd look in the classroom and say, right over there is where Gordy Howe sat. And then over there is where Bobby Hull sat. And, and back here, that's where Terry Sawtuck sat. And so you can imagine uh, the attention grabbing device that was all the students uh, who were all hockey fans, it seemed, would would just be amazed and in awe that that those three players had preceded them. And they were all not only had they attended class there, but they were in that very room where they were. fact that three of these legendary players um, had a connection with Cambridge is is remarkable and and had a connection further more with Galt Collegiate and, and having attended class there and sat in the same room. Heartfelt uh, condolences go out uh, to everybody in, in the Hull family, all his family and friends. Um, he, he made a remarkable contribution uh, n not only to the game of hockey, but to, for all of Canada, and uh, and he's going to be missed. Mm -hmm.